We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter number 31. Narada Muni instructs the Prachetas. Text number 21. Canto 4, chapter 31. Chapter 31. The last chapter. Okay. And the text, Maharaj? 21. 21, okay. Na bhajati kumane sinam saichyam. Na bhajati kumashinam saichyatam. Na bhajati. Na bhajati kuman ish inam sa ichyam. Na bhajati kuman shinam sa ichyam. Harir adanan atma dana priyo rasagna. Harir adanan atma dana priya rasagnana. Harir adanan atma dana priyo rasagna. Harir adanan atma dana priyo rasagnana. Shritadana kula. Karamananam Madhavye Shutadana Kula Karamananam Madhavye Shutadana Kula Karamananam Madhavye Shutadana Kula Karamananam Madhavye Vidhadati Papam Akinchaneshu Sat so, Vidadati Papa Makinchaneshu Satsu Vidadati Papa Makinchaneshu Satsu Nabajati Kumana Sinam Sa Ichyam Nabajati Kumana Sinam Sa Ichyam Harir Adanat Madhana Priyot Rasatna Harir Adanat Madhana Priyot Rasatna Shrutadana Kula Karmanam Madhirye Shrutadana Kula Karmanam Madhirye Vidhadati Papam Makinchaneshu Satsu so, Vidadati Papa Makinchaneshu Satsu. Okay. Nabajati Kumakshinam Sajam. Nabajati Kumanai Sinam Harir Adanatma Dana Priora Sadhya. Harir Adanatma Dana Priora Sadhya. Shutadana Kula Karmanam Madhya. Shutadana Kula Karmanam Madhya. Vidati Papam Akinchane Shusatsu. Vidati Papam Akinchane Shusatsu. Baba. 
jati kumasi sinam sa ijam Narva jati kumani sinam sa ijam Hari radha natma dhana priyo rasanya Hari radha natma dhana priyo rasanya Sruta dhana kula karma nama dhirye Sruta dhana kula karma nama dhirye Vidhādhati pāpa makīśane śusatsu Nābhajāti kumāni sīnam sa ijyam Harīr adhanātmā dhana priyo rasagnyā Shruta dhana kula karma nam madar ye Shruta dhana kula karma nam madar ye Vidadhati papam akin chane shushatshu Vidadhati papam akin chane shushatshu Word meaning na Na Never Bajati Bajati Accepts Kumanishinam Kumanishinam Of persons with a dirty heart Of persons with a dirty heart Sa Sa He He Ijyam Ijyam Offering Offering Hare Hare The Supreme Lord The Supreme Lord Adana Adana To those who have no material possessions to those who have no material possessions. Atmadana. Atmadana. Simply dependent on the Lord. Simply dependent on the Lord. Priya. Priya. Who is dear. Who is dear. Rasagna. Rasagna. Who accepts the essence of life. Who accepts the essence of life? Shruta. Shruta. Education. Education. Dana. Dana. Well. Well. Kula. Kula. Aristocracy. Aristocracy. Karmanam. Karmanam. And of fruitful activities. And of fruitful activities. Madai. Madai. By pride. By pride. Yay. Yeah. All those who, all those who, vidat, vidadati, vidadati, perform, perform, papam, papam, disgrace, disgrace, akinchaneshu, akinchaneshu, without material possessions, without material possessions. Satsu, Satsu, unto the devotees, unto the devotees. Translation. Translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes very pleased, very dear to those devotees who have no material possessions but are fully happy in possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Indeed, the Lord relishes the devotional activities of such devotees. Those who are puffed up with material education, wealth, aristocracy and fruit of activity are very proud of possessing material things and they often deride the devotees. Even if such people offer the Lord worship, the Lord never accepts them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. This, this is the verse we're doing in Zurich, but every day we're reading in Zurich, and so I'm just following on what where yeah. we left off from Zurich. Yesterday I did text 20, mm -hmm. so purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is dependent on His pure devotees. He does not even accept the offerings of those who are not devotees. A pure devotee is one who feels he does not possess anything material. A devotee is always happy 
and possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Devotees may sometimes appear materially poor, but because they are spiritually advanced and enriched, they are most dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such devotees are free from attachment to family, society, friendship, children, and so on. They abandon affection for all these material possessions and are always happy in possessing the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead understands the position of his devotee. If a person derides a pure devotee, he is never recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, the Supreme Lord never excuses one who offends a pure devotee. There are many examples of this in history. A great mystic yogi, Durvasa Muni, offended the great devotee Ambarish Maharaj. The great sage Durvasa was to be chastised by the Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord. Even though the great mystic directly approached the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he was never excused. Those on the path of liberation should be very careful not to offend a pure devotee. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare So Narada Muni is speaking and he's instructing the Prachetas. Prachetas, they were the ten sons of a, a great king called Maharaj Prachini Barisha. So the Prachetas were in their ashram. Narada Muni came to visit them and they told Narada Muni, they said, you know, we're very be bewildered by the material energy. Please enlighten us. So Narada Muni speaking to them and he was telling them about the relationship between the Lord and the living entities. And he was explaining how we're part of the Lord, just like the root. When we water the plant, put the water on the root. We don't put the water on the leaves, we put it on the root. And from the root, all the leaves and branches get nourished. So everyone in the universe, even the devas, the different gods, demigods, we're like leaves and branches. And the root is the Supreme Lord. Right? Narada Muni gave that example. And he gave another example, he said, like the, the stomach. You feed the stomach and then all the parts of the body get energy. You cannot just feed the, the legs or the hand. You have to feed the stomach and then the energy is distributed to all the parts of the body. So the Lord is like that. He's like the root or like the stomach. And be satisfied the Lord, then everyone will be satisfied, everyone will be happy. So Narada Muni was explaining then that everyone should take up devotional service. They should do devotion, acts of devotion for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. And in that way make their life successful. And now he's describing that if you do devotion to the Lord, the Lord will be very pleased with you. 
the Lord is very, very pleased with the devotee. But of course, devotee is not an easy thing to be a devotee. We're trying to be devotees. Devotee means one who has completely taken shelter of the Lord. We take shelter of the Lord and we don't think we possess anything. As he said, Prabhupada, as Narada Muni is saying, one who gives up all material possessions. In other words, he doesn't think this is mine, this belongs to me. He understands everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. It's not my property, it's all his. And I have to use it for his service. So that is the thinking of the de pure devotee. Somebody may be a devotee, they may be a mixed devotee. Mixed devotee means we all think, well, this, this much is for Krishna and this much is mine. Right? <laughs> we give something to Krishna and something. But the pure devotee yeah, he understand, understands everything belongs to Krishna and use everything for Krishna's service. So, Narad, uh, Prabhupada, as Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he says sometimes people think, oh, devotee is poor, they have no money, and they think they. And, uh, just like when Prabhupada went to America, they, they said to him, Oh, you're coming from a poor country, India is a poor country, you're coming to America as a rich country, you know, are you coming to get money from us? And Srila Prabhupada told him, he said, No, I, said, I don't want you. He said, I'm not coming to get your money, I'm coming to give you what you have lost. He said, You've forgotten about God, so I've come to remind you about God. So, Prabhupada never bothered about money, he never asked people for money, he just said, if they wanted to give, of course we would accept it and use it for Krishna's service. But he never had to go and beg from people to give money for this or that. So he understood, Krishna will give, if Krishna wants to give, he can give the whole world, just like the Pandavas. The Pandavas, before the battle of Kurukshetra, they had nothing, they had no kingdom. And they asked Maharaj Yudhisthira, just give one village, he said, I will not, no. they asked Duryodhana, Duryodhana, give one village, let us, so that we can keep our task, because we're Kshatriya. So Kshatriya should have a village, they should have some kingdom, should have some property, they had nothing. And they were asking Duryodhana, can you just give us one village, he said, I will not give you enough land to go through the eye of a needle. So that was his mood, you know, he didn't want to give anything. And so the Pandavas had nothing anyway, Krishna wanted them to fight Kurukshetra war and, and they fought the Kurukshetra war and 18 days later they ruled the world, they were ruling the whole world. So Prabhupada said, if you surrender to Krishna, take part in his 18-day plan, he can give you the whole world if, if you're qualified. You know, the Pandavas, Maharaj Yudhisthira, they were qualified. They could use it properly for the, they knew how to use it according to religious principles. So if, if Krishna wants, he can give you the whole world. But a devotee doesn't think, this is mine. He doesn't think, I'm the proprietor. He understands. Krishna is the proprietor. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the fifth chapter, the final verse of the Bhagavad Gita is the peace formula. Peace formula. You know, people like peace, like United Nations, you know, they're always talking about peace and Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, you know. We, we talk about that, we want peace. So the real formula for peace is given in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said, you need to know three things, right? What do you need to know? What three things do you need to know to get peace? Krishna says, first you have to know Krishna is the proprietor. Everything belongs to Krishna. And then everything is meant for his pleasure. And third thing, he is our best friend. He is the best friend of all. Because he's always with us, you know. We've had many friends. When you were at school, you had friends. 
when you were uh, at college, you had different friends, then you were working, you have different friends, like that, so different times in your life with different friends, they come and go, right? I had so many different friends. But one friend is always with us, the super soul, Krishna in the heart. He's always with us, he's speaking to us, he's guiding us. So we have to know he's the best friend and we have to know he's the proprietor. Everything belongs to him. He's Ishavashyam idam sarvam in the Ishopanishad. Ishopanishad. Iso Ishavashyam idam sarvam yatkincha jagat yam jagat tena chaktena bunjada magrada kesha siddhanam Everything in the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. So we should accept only what is our quota. Don't take more than what we need. And, and one should accept therefore only those things necessary for himself. And we should not take more than that. No, why? Because it's not ours. It belongs to Krishna. We came in this world with nothing and we will leave with nothing. But while we're here, we're trying to, <laughs> people want to have, they want to accumulate more. They build empires, you know. We were seeing Roosevelt, these different people, right? You know, where are they today, you know? Rockefeller, you know. All of these people, big rich people, you know, what, where are they today? What is their destiny? You know, you can, and we are in the material world, 14 worlds. And sometimes we go up to the higher planets and sometimes we go down to the lower planets. In the lower planets, Yamaraj is there, the god of death who punishes the sinful. And the higher planets, the devas are there. They're enjoying their punya, but it's all temporary. Everywhere there is birth and death. You take birth and live for some time, then you, you die, take another body. We have to prepare for the next life. People only worry about this life, they're only thinking today, you know, and they're not thinking about the next life. That is real planning, <laughs> planning for the future, yeah. the next life, where are we going to go? But if you plan for the next life, and you'll be happy also in this life too, guaranteed. Krishna takes care of his devotees. It's up to us to take shelter of Krishna. There was one astrologer came to the village. So four different people came to him. And the one came, he was the son of the ruler in the village. So the astrologer told him, oh, he said, don't die. Mad, Mad Jiva, Raja Putra Charanjiva, Charanjiva, right? Charanjiva. There's this devotee, Charanjiva. his name is Charanjiva. It means Charanjiva. you don't die, yeah. long life, I'm immortal. Would you like that blessing? Would you like to be Charanjiva? <laughs> Some people, they get that blessing, it's a lot of trouble. Because when Brahma dies, then the whole universe is flooded and you have to live in the ocean. <laughs> you have to swim in the ocean for, for years you know, and wait for the end, wait for the next creation to begin. Anyway, the first man, the king's son, don't die. Majiva Rishi Putraka. Oh, Raja Putra Charanjiva. Next one was the sage, the son of the sage. He said, May your death come soon. May you die soon. The third one was a butcher's son. He told him, don't live, don't die. 
And the fourth one was a devotee. They said, doesn't matter if you live or if you die. <laughs> so they were like some, they, how to understand this? Mm -hmm. Well, the king's son, you know, he's doing a lot of bad things. He's the king's son. Nobody can start, he does whatever he wants, you know. So he does a lot of nonsense. So when he dies, he will suffer. So better he doesn't die. <laughs> because when he dies, he will have to go to hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then the Rishi is living with his father in the forest, and they just very austere. They just eat some wild vegetables. You know, they don't go to the supermarket. They don't go to co-op. They don't go to micros. <laughs> They're in the forest, there's no supermarket. They just eat whatever nature provides and drink the water from the stream and sleep on the ground. And in this way, they're doing a lot of austerity. But by that austerity, next life will get a very good birth. And the Buddha, don't live, don't die. Because every day, killing, chopping the meat, so better he doesn't live. Mm. And he shouldn't die because next life is <laughs> mm. But for the devotee, it doesn't matter if they live or if they die. Because if they live every day, the chanting Hare Krishna, eating prasadam, mm. worshipping the deity, mm. and if they die, they'll go on, go on with Krishna, they'll go to be with Krishna, continue. Mm. So, what do you want to be? What do you want? Devotee. You want to be the devotee or you want to be the butcher? Or no. <laughs> you want to be the son of the king? <laughs> so Narada Muni is telling the prachetas like that, do devotional service, you do bhakti, you do service for the Supreme Lord. The Lord will be very pleased with you. Please, Lord, please the Supreme Lord, that is the goal of life, mm -hmm. to give pleasure to the Lord, then our life is successful. Mm -hmm. In the material world, very difficult to please people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no matter what you do for them, they'll just complain, mm -hmm. <laughs> not enough. But if we can serve Krishna by loving devotion, Krishna doesn't want our offering. He has many goddesses of fortune to bring him flowers and fruits. Mm -hmm. There are many people bringing him offering. But what he wants is real devotion. So Prabhupada, in the purple, some people think they're a devotee, they're not really devotee. One who is the devotee of the devotee, he is the devotee. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just go to Krishna directly, we have to go through the devotee. Please the devotee. And Prabhupada talks about Durvasa Muni. He was a great yogi, a mystic yogi, but he was jealous. He was envious of a king. There was this one king who was very pious and he was always worshipping the deity and he was always giving prasadam to people and putting on festivals in the temple. He was a very pious king, so the king was very popular. And Durvasa Muni is a big yogi, he would get angry at people, you know, and curse them. So people were afraid of him. So Durvasa Muni, he thought, he was, he was jealous because the king is so popular. So he tried to bring trouble to the king. He arranged to get, to give the king some trouble. And he, he tried to harm the king. But when he tried to harm the king, then Krishna protected the devotee the king because the king was a devotee. So Krishna protected him. The king didn't ask anyone to protect him. Krishna himself came and the, the Surasan Chakra came. The Sura, and the Surasan Chakra came and it destroyed the demon. And it chased Durvasa. The yogi was run, he ran away and he went to Lord Brahma asked Lord Brahma to help him. Lord Brahma said, I can't help you. He went to Lord Shiva. He asked Lord Shiva, save me. 
He said, I can do nothing. He went to see Lord Narayan in the Vaikuntha. And Lord Narayan said, I can't help you. He said, what? He said, come on, the Surasan Chakra, it's your Surasan Chakra chasing me. Lord Narayan said, I can't do anything. You have offended my devotee. You have to go back to the devotee and get forgiven. So he came back to the, the king and he offered the businesses to the king and he begged forgiveness. And the king said, no, what? I want, you are a great soul, I, I, I worship you, <laughs> you know. And anyway, the king, of course, gave blessings to the yogi and the yogi was saved. But Prabhupada is making the point, we have to deal very carefully with devotees. We don't want to offend any devotee because devotees are all very dear to Lord Krishna. Because they've taken shelter, they've taken shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. So an offence against the lotus feet is more serious than an offence against the body. The feet are more sensitive. You can tolerate the heat of the sun on our head, but you cannot tolerate the heat on our feet. If you go on the hot sand in the summer, We'll burn our feet. Yeah. Yeah. You've got frozen. No, it's a question. Yeah, you can. Yeah? He has a question. Really? Yeah. What question do you have? Um, so, Maharaj, let's say somebody is a devotee and um, uh, is offending another devotee. Mm -hmm. What is the mentality of receiving an offense? Well, a devotee thinks, I must have offended him in my past life. I must have done something to offend him, so now he's, I'm getting it back. And we should be tolerant. Devotees should be tolerant like the tree. Like the grass, yeah. Mm. Humbler than the grass. And this way, let it go. We don't take any action. Okay. Any other questions? Mm. You have questions? Okay. No, I don't. Queen Kunti also said the same thing in her prayers. Queen Kunti said, Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shridbir Edamana Madapuna Naivarhati Avidatam Vai Twam Akinchana Gotra. Is it, if you're on the path of material progress, then you cannot know Krishna. Mm -hmm. If you're only, if you're thinking it's material, pro and how do people progress materially? We want to be in a, the aristocratic family, mm -hmm. or we want to be uh, educated, very educated. You want to be very good looking, you want to be very rich. We want this, this is material progress, these four things. Mm. So if we are interested in these four things, then we won't be able to know Krishna. We'll be covered. It'll be recovered for us. Mm. We have to not be too much concerned with these material things. Then we can come to Krishna. Mm. Mm. Queen Kunti said like. Mm. Okay. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shil Prabhupada ki jai. jai. Thank you Guru Maharaj. Good Bhakti Vigna Vinash Narasimha Maharaj ki jai. 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 Okay, chapter text 31. Stop it. Yeah, we can stop it.